Hi, welcome back. Today we're gonna to see how we can filter Power BI dashboard tiles from a Power Apps canvas. Lately I had a customer where he was asking me if we can bring Power BI in a canvas app. Of course we can do that. But he also wants to dynamically filter the data based on, um, based on information he can pass from the Power App. And um, that's actually not that straightforward to do because there's no option directly in Power Apps to that. But we can see today how we can do that with uh, one or two tricks. If you like the video, stick around, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. So here I have a demo dashboard that I've created. And as you can see here, I have a couple of um, visualizations. One of them is the revenue by country here, where we have the countries listed and their uh, representative revenues. No? And if you click on the USA, then you will filter the rest based on, on the what yeah what has happened in USA and so on. And no, it's dynamic as we all know from Power BI, nothing new. And I have here also a revenue and growth by year. No? The growth uh, in percentage is a calculated column, is a measure that I've created, but uh, we're not going to focus on that today. We are just going to see how we can bring these two tiles, for example, uh, after we have published them in um, in the Power BI service, how we can bring them in uh, in the Canvas application. So as you can see here, this is the same report, but on the Power BI service. I've already published it. And what I also did is I went here and pinned this and this visual, also a couple of other ones, but uh, we're going to focus on these two visuals uh, for this demonstration. And I pinned them in a dashboard. So if I go here and then I switch to the dashboard, we can see that I have these two visuals um, pinned into tiles in this dashboard. No? So now I want to bring th these two visuals into my uh, Power App. And we can do that by and firstly, of course, switching to Power Apps. And I have here an empty screen. And here at the top we have um, the diagrams and here we can choose the Power BI tiles. Now this will create like a yeah a t an empty tile here on the right hand side you can select the workspace. This is mine and the dashboard is because you can only bring dashboards in Power in Power Apps you have to uh, pin the tiles you would need in um, in a dashboard. And also these are my three tiles that you can see here one two three. Now I will get the revenue here. There it is. And I will copy and paste this. And instead of that, I will get the revenue by growth. That was the other one you saw here, the bottom. So now I have these two, um, these two tiles. And if I want to filter here, let's play this. If I want to filter here, I can do that, but this tile now it's not f being filtered. So I could go on and um, click here as well and see, whoops, so this is now bringing me to the Power BI service, but um, this is now not the dynamic filtering that I want. So I would like that when I select USA, I want here on the right hand side to see the revenue and percentage growth by year only for USA. So to do so, it's not that easy because we don't have a slicer here. And today we're going to create our own slicer. So I will select here an uh, input drop down box or a comma box. Let's go with a comma box. And um, first I want to do is I want to disable the select multiple property. I will make this to false. And for the items, I will manually put the uh, countries in there. You could also connect to the data source and then distinct the countries and that would work as well. But um, since my data source is manipulated in, in Power BI. You know? I don't have, for example, in the, in the, in the data source USA as a country uh, because the, the values from USA come from another table which doesn't have a country as a, as a, as a column. 
um, it's 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 a bit complicated. So I'm going to manually put the the, um, the values for the combo box. But keep in mind that if your data source is a bit uh, simpler, or uh, we could also make this work. But yeah, for the purpose of this demonstration, well, I'm going to keep it simple. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open two brackets, and I'm going to put the values in quotes. And I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, values. So I'm going to paste this seven times, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm going to write here USA. Here's going to be Australia. Next is Japan. Then is Germany. Nigeria. Mexico. Oops. Mexico. Make sure you write this the right way. Uh, because um, this needs to be in uh, exactly the same way it's also in the in Power BI. Otherwise, the filtering will not work. And then Canada. No? I'll delete this semicolon since no other countries are there. Okay, so if I play this, I should be able to see here my selection. No? And there it is. So now what I want to do is when I select USA, or a sale or whatever, I want these two tiles to filter based on this value. And if we select the tile, we can see here in the advanced settings, a couple of information here. And the one that we are interested in is the tile URL. So this is the URL that comes from Power BI. This is a dashboard ID, we can see here. And this is the configuration, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what all this means, but I suppose this is uh, the code that um, the Power BI is expecting for, for it to show you this tile. No? So each tile has like its um, own embed code. No? But we're going to leave everything that's after, that's already there, we're going to leave as it is. And at the end of this code or this URL, uh, we are going to write the, we're going to give Power BI the, um, the filter query. So as we have seen in Power Automate maybe, no, where we uh, filter query um, a SharePoint list, this is the same thing. When we filter query a SharePoint list, the get action to, that brings us data does nothing else than giving um, some parameters to the with the URL when um, reaching out to the to the, data, to the data source, not to the web service. So we're going to do the same thing here, but a little bit more manually. And um, But this is on, done only once, and then it's automatic based on the dropdown over there. So what we write here is a question mark, and then we add filter, and then we add the equal sign. And then we need to see in our dashboard how the name of the columns is and the tables. So if I select this tile, I can see here on the right hand side that my table is called geography and the um, column I want to filter it on is the country. So make sure you write or you, you, you take a look and check how this is uh, written because we need to pass that parameter exactly written, uh, written exactly the same way. Now, so geography and country. To be safe, I'm going to double click and copy that. And now I'm going to go back to the URL I was editing. And here I want to paste the geography and then slash country. And what we want to do next is we write the equals sign, but in text. As you might remember from Power Automate, it's EQ, no, equals. And then we need a single quote and the double quote, no, one single quote, one double quote. And then we need the value, which will be equals, no, which value from our combo box. So I have here the combo box two. So I'm going to search after that. Combo, um, combo box two. It's not finding it. I need I should probably close the quotes before I um, 
continue writing. And what is missing is that it needs the end percent here. So let's delete that for now. And so that I can find my combo box. Let's have a combo box two selected because it's a single selection dot value. And then I need the end again. So as you can see now, this is accepted at least. It's not uh, complaining. But if I select USA, Australia, it's not filtering. And the reason why it is not filtering is because on the right hand side, when I select the tile under the settings, here's the tile URL we just edited. We have here a lot of uh, a lot of more uh, some more um, settings we can take a look at. We have here the Power BI inter interactions, no? which um, allows it to be interactive. The reset is set to false. Load Power BI content, of course. And this one here, allow new API, which is set to false, which means that it's not allowing for a new API to be sent to the data source or to the service. So if we set this to true and we try this again, it is still not working. Maybe I've done a mistake here and I think I might need to remove this. Okay, I found a mistake. Uh, this is not a question mark. This is an end icon. As you can see now, um, the filtering is working. So I will mistake this first one. So as you can see now, this is Australia and now we are seeing only the country Australia and so on and so forth. So if I had to um, leave this to false, then you will see that the filtering is not working anymore. No? So this is an important part. Now, of course, writing the right um, query, but also keeping in mind that you have to set the allow new API to true. Otherwise, your filtering will not work. So the, our, the query function will not be um, passed to the, to the source, to the services, to the web service. So as you can see, this tile is working. We only need to do the same thing for the next for the tile next to it. And I'm go going to copy this part here and paste it into this tile URL. And this should be now good to go as soon as I put this to true. And if I now switch to Australia, this looks a little bit different. Hmm. The revenue for 2016 is, um, I don't know what it is, it's 50 million. And if I switch to USA, the revenue for 2016 is 81 million. So as you can see now, we have a drop down like which function as a slicer, you know, the, the ones we are used to use in, um, in Power BI. And this way we can now, um, yeah filter the data here. So what we can do also is because we cannot, if we select that, we should now see nothing because uh, it is still expecting um, a value, right? So it, it's not, it's not uh, sending us everything back as it should. And now it's filtering on Canada. And if I remove that, then this is empty. So what we should do is we can check if I put here um, a label, we can check uh, if this combo box is now black or blank or empty. So is blank um, combo box two that selected that value. And this is true. Let's see if it's also empty. And this is false. So as you can see, this comma box is for us blank and empty, but for Power Apps, it's only blank, it's not empty. So what I'm going to use 
is here I'm going to say if um, combo box 2 oh, is blank of course dot selected dot value then that then I want to have here the part without the filtering in quotes otherwise I want to have the one with filtering ah, my mistake that one was too much so as you can see now uh, this is these are still the the single one so this is still um, the one with the filtering and it's showing empty if I now filter on Japan this will now filter on Japan and this as well but if I want to have it empty this will not work and this will so you're just going to do the same thing on the other one as well and that should be then good to go oh sorry I don't need to copy all of that because the ID is different for that tile I will copy this section here and paste it in here and then I want to have come on let me copy that I want to have this part here uh, in quotes semicolon and then close the if parenthesis over there and if we test this again as you can see the um, the drop down the comma box is blank because it's true it's showing everything and you select U USA it's not blank anymore and it's filtering based on USA so this is interesting um, also to know how comma boxes um, behave because if I delete this empty is never so a comma box is, is never empty as you can see it says false again and, but it's blank and if I select something it's still not empty which of course no it's not empty but it is also not blank so when using comma boxes use the is blank function instead of is empty um, and you should be on the safe side or you can use the or um, or function as well so you say that if it's blank or is empty then do that otherwise do that no then you have both covered yeah so that's it for this uh, short video I hope you liked it um, and if you did so make sure that you subscribe to the channel give it a thumbs up and also um, yeah catch you on the next one stay safe bye